All right, what's up guys? Hope you guys are having a great day and welcome to the beginning of a brand new Fantasy Draft CFM series where the Indianapolis Colts in this one. This league is filled with pro players as always. The best competition in the world are in these specific leagues. Prize pool is up over $2,500 this season. Two season league. The draft is about to begin, man. Let's go ahead, jump right into it and don't forget to leave some comments below. Tell me who I should have picked instead, which picks you guys actually liked, who I should trade for. And with that being said, man, let's go ahead, see the draft. All right, so we're coming up here. I believe we're pick number 14. Seattle is currently on the board. I'm looking at best available. Honestly, I don't really see too much that I like. I'm going to look at quarterbacks, but it seems like pretty much every quarterback is already gone. Justin Fields off the board to the Chicago Bears. I mean, Kyler Murray's gone. Joe Burrow just got drafted right before me. We're on the board. We're on the clock. And honestly, I don't know who to take. Like, what are our options here? We could go wide receiver. Devontae Adams is a 99 overall. We could go Henry Ruggs, 98 speed. We got him in our Texans league. I don't really feel like drafting him again. I want to get different players from the last fantasy draft we did. Miles Garrett, Travis Kelsey, Jalen Ramsey. I think I'm going to go offense. That's usually my strategy. We might have to switch it up at some point and just go all defense for a draft and see if it actually makes a difference. But I feel like I can generate a stop or two a game regardless of how good my defenders are. I'm looking at tight end again. Kyle Pitts is still up there. We did the last league for the Texans a few months ago. I know Kyle Pitts was a superstar X Factor then. I don't know if he is now with the new roster update. So I'm not gonna go that route. And again, we, we got him last draft, so I want new players. Tight end is super important, right? All the quarterbacks that I was kind of interested in are already gone. So I'm thinking skill position, I'm thinking wide receiver or tight end. In terms of speed, Henry Ruggs, really the only person. So tight end might be the answer here. 15 seconds left. I mean, who do I pick? George Kittle, 88 speed. He looks pretty good. We could go Mark Andrews. Darren Waller might not be bad, but I mean, we just don't have enough time. I feel rushed. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to take George Kittle, man. I throw to my tight end a ton. True value 32 at number 14. So not terrible. I just felt a little rushed. I wasn't prepared for that. Maybe I should have gotten Darren Waller instead. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if George Kittle was a good pick right there at pick number 14 in the first round. All right, we're getting towards the end of round two here. Coming up with our second pick, and I'm thinking about going quarterback. Now, most quarterbacks are already off the board. All the rookies are starting to fly. Justin Fields obviously went first round. Trey Lance went first round as well. And this is a league where we can X-Factor our quarterback right out of the gate. Now, we're not going to get the abilities we want right away. It's still going to take a ton of time. To develop these young quarterbacks but for that reason i'm going with zach wilson quarterback rookie super young he's got great throw power decent mobility good release i mean zach wilson can't really go wrong again it's going to take some time to develop him get those ratings up get those abilities unlocked but i love the pick there in round number two with how quickly these quarterbacks are flying off the board all right boys here we are back in round three about a minute left on the clock here Wide receivers flew off the board here. If we sort by development trait, the only three wide receivers with abilities left, Jamar Chase, Chris Godwin, and Mike Williams. Mike Williams, a little bit too slow to take this early on. Chris Godwin looks like a solid pick, but I mean, Jamar Chase, 21 years old, 92 speed, hidden dev trait, but he is a superstar. True value at 65, picked at number 78. So the CPU is telling us that's a great pick. And honestly, I agree. With how quickly wide receivers are flying off the board, we need a guy with abilities who's going to get open, especially against man coverage. Jamar Chase does exactly that. I love that pick in round number three. All right, our pick is coming up in round four. And these dudes are picking super quickly. I mean, not even five seconds is coming off the clock. I feel rushed because I think I have more time here. I'm looking at running back Joe Mixon. He actually plays bad as well. Follows me on Twitter. Weird flex, but Joe Mixon, man, would be kind of a homer pick. He's a great running back. One of the best in the league. He's got those superstar abilities as well. Darius Leonard here. I mean, that's not really that exciting of a pick, especially this early on. We could still get a very good player in round four. 
Um, we could go possibly offensive line ability. You know, it's always nice to have those post-ups out there, those edge protectors that get threat detector as well. Tells you if your opponent is blitzing on third and fourth down. One of the best abilities in the game. That's an option. I feel like, again, it might be a bit early for that. Najee Harris, I think is only 88 speed. But again, he is superstar. So that might be a pick worth taking here. But Mike Williams still on the board from when we picked him our taste in the last round. There's only three superstar wide receivers left. Mike Williams somehow slipped all the way back here. Chris Godwin got drafted pretty quickly after I took Jamar Chase in round three. But Mike Williams, a little bit slow, I get it. 26 years old, good age, six foot four, not the fastest. The route running will get there. He gets the abilities. And we want a physical receiver who can go up there, win those jump balls. Mike Williams in round four, man. I love our wide receiver core so far. Plus George Kittle at tight end, right? Our offense is looking nasty right now. It might be time to draft some defense. All right, I may have lied about that. Round five here, and I'm looking at Jonathan Taylor. We, we got to address the obvious. How is this man not an X Factor? How is he not at least superstar? Give this man his abilities. He is seriously in the consideration for MVP of the NFL as a running back. He's unreal. These are the most updated rosters, and somehow he is not an X Factor. I feel like that is absolutely criminal, man. The best running back in the NFL outside of maybe Derrick Henry, but at the very least a very close second he can run right by you in 94 speed he can run you over with like i don't even know 90 trucking he can make you miss as well and honestly his hands aren't that bad either i think it's like 70 catching so even though we don't run a lot our running back still gets a ton of action in pretty much every league we play in whether it's through the air or on the ground jonathan taylor can do both of those things and especially early on with zach wilson not getting gunslinger for probably at least until playoffs we're gonna need to run the ball a bit more. Jonathan Taylor, I think, is the best option here. I'm just gonna check these other positions. I'm checking safety. You know, maybe we can get like a, you know, Justin Reed's up there. I love Justin Reed, but again, he was in our last league. I'm trying to make different picks. Jonathan Taylor would be coming back to the Colts, man. It's only fitting. And I'm gonna take him. True value 113. CPU agrees. Again, that's a great pick. We have so much offense, no defensive players. I think it might be finally time to change that. All right, round six here. I'm looking for offense alignment. I know I just said I was gonna draft defense again. I'm looking for an offense line ability though. It's always nice to have at least one of those, especially with that threat detector ability I was talking about earlier. Unfortunately, I think literally every single one is already gone. A hot commodity apparently are those offensive line abilities. We're currently on the clock here. And honestly, I don't know who to pick again. This is tough. There's some decent players up here. Adrian Amos at safety. He's just not super exciting. Like he's a cool player. He'll be great for us, but I don't know if that's like really a pick I want to make here. AJ Terrell is a six foot one corner, 22 years old, 92 speed, 89 zone. I mean, AJ Terrell looks a nasty. One of the best young corners in the NFL as well. And I'm going to take him. CPU agrees once again. CPU is telling me I'm having a great draft. I don't know if I necessarily agree. I like it. I don't know if I love it though. I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. We had to go defense though. AJ Terrell, I mean, he looks too good to pass up there. We'll go ahead, take him. I'm drafting another corner next round. All right, back in round seven here. I told you guys I'm going corner once again. We're scrolling, we're looking. We have Jeff Akuda here, who I know is kind of a disappointment for the Lions in real life, but he still looks super solid, still very young, a lot of room to grow and develop. Six foot one, we love the height on the corners. We do not enjoy getting dunked on by players like George Kittle and Mike Williams, who we've already drafted ourselves. So the height definitely makes a huge difference this year. You know, normally in previous years, I would take the five foot 10, the five foot nine guys with 95 speed but i think this year i'd rather take the 91 at 92 speed and six foot plus you know i sound like a sorority girl right i like i like my dudes tall pause pick number 14 though we're going back to corner and i think it's gonna be a cuda i think it's gonna be a cuda it's either him or oja Medea. i just cannot pronounce that name there's absolutely no chance i said that even close to right marcus peters though is another consideration here i mean he's He's six foot, he's 91 speed, he has good coverage stats, but I feel like I'd rather take maybe a younger corner. I'll look at safeties too here, just to be sure. Marcus May, 28. I'd rather take someone younger 
than Marcus May and Peters. That way we can grow them, develop them. They're more likely to get those dev traits. And again, this is a two-year league, so there is room. It's not like, you know, my Broncos league, which is five seasons. But it's still fun taking the younger players. I think if I have the choice, I'll always go with the more youthful player. And again, Akuda, he looks really good. He fits everything we're looking for in a corner. It's tough between him and OJ. That's what I'm going to call him. But I think I'm going to go Okuda here. Hopefully, fingers crossed, OJ is available for us in the next round as well. We can get our two outside corners and then make one of them our slot corner. All right, pick number 19 here in round eight. We're looking at safety, and Kyle Duggar might be a really nice pick, man. I love Duggar. I'm a Patriots fan. 90 speed, star dev, 25. He looks solid. But we're going to check to see if Oja Medea is here again. Did I pronounce that right this time? I don't know. Probably not still. Oja Medea here, though, six foot one, 23 years old, very similar to Akuda and both AJ Terrell. And I told you guys, if he was still here, I'm taking him. He looks awesome. So we got our three corners here back in round nine. I'm looking for a user outside of our three corners, our two safeties. I feel like a user is probably the most important position on defense here. Not a ton of safeties. Most people have already drafted their user, but I'm going Divine Diablo. I know he's a running back. You know, he played corner. He played safety in college. I believe he probably plays both. He's like a hybrid guy for the Raiders. I could be wrong. He could just be playing linebacker, but you know, he's always been a hybrid guy. We'll take him. We'll move him to safety. Six foot three, 226, a rookie, 91 speed. He's got the hit power. I mean, how can you possibly go wrong here with Diablo? as it's just taking forever to load. I'm switching him right away, moving to strong safety. He's gonna be our user, man, and he looks disgusting. Let's go, Divine Diablo, man. Love this pick right here. Round 11, we're getting into the end of our notable picks. I'm not gonna show every round. I think we're gonna end up doing like 25 or 26. A lot of these guys are gonna be like low 60, high 60 overall players with just decent wheels. So it's not super exciting though. Round 11, pick 14. We still need some more secondary players. You know, we need safeties to move the linebacker. We need safeties. Paulson Adebo here is like a worse Akuda. Good height, good speed, pretty young as well. A normal dev trait, which isn't the greatest, but he fits everything I'm looking for in a DB. Once again, we have a blueprint for who we're drafting in our secondary this year and he fits it so we're taking him i like that pick in round number 11. and then our last pick here that i'm going to show is i, I don't know I, I think we're going to go back to secondary just fill out our secondary here this would be the last pick we need to do that round 12 we're looking at safeties we're looking at free safeties corners tyree gillespie six foot 22 years old good speed all right what's up guys hope you guys are having a great day and welcome to week one of our brand new Indianapolis Colts Fantasy Draft CFM Series. I'm super excited for this one. Now, obviously our Texans Fantasy Draft Series went really well, right? We won the Super Bowl in season one. Season two, bit disappointing. We weren't able to go back to back. We lost in the AFC Championship. We're out for revenge this time with the Colts, like I said. I showed you guys all my draft picks. Let me know in the comments below who I should have drafted instead, what trades I should be making. Someone actually asked what I would trade for Kittle. So that's certainly an option we have to make there. And we're playing the Seattle Seahawks in week one. We have a lot of things to deal with. Let's go ahead, deal with those, jump into week one, and start the season off 1-0. All right, first things first, we have a meeting with our reporter here. What is the key to victory, dominating offense or stifling defense? Now, part of me wants to go with dominating offense, but Zach Wilson, he doesn't have the throwing abilities. He's not going to get them before playoffs this year. So I think the answer is going to be stifling defense. We're going away from the route we usually take. It all starts with defense. We plan on making their offense uncomfortable. Now, I feel like our offense should be a right, even without the pass lead elite, without the gunslinger, disrupting the pass or stifling the run. Now, this guy does a bit of both. One of the more balanced players I've played before. I believe he's the Cowboys in our Washington football team series. So he plays pretty balanced. We'll try to disrupt the pass. Hopefully there's like a an interception goal and not just to hold them to less than 150 yards. Okay, well, I was wrong. Allow less than 200. I don't know how realistic that's gonna be. We might have to play some clock management, time of possession, just hold the ball, run it, shoot clock, if we wanna meet that goal now. 
I'm not going to play too differently just because we have a more challenging defensive goal here. We also have a press conference with our rookie at quarterback one, which is obviously a Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is making his debut this week, and we've seen in the past that can be tough for rookies early on. What are you expecting this week from Zach? A great performance, show flashes, or no expectations? Now listen. I'm going to go with show flashes, all right? I'm going with the, the medium one there. I don't want to, like, try to throw for 350 plus or, you know, go with the lower one, and then it just ruins his morale. So we'll go with the medium one here, beat the Seahawks, get two-plus passing touchdowns with Zach Wilson. Easily achievable, right? Nothing too crazy and not too low that we risk kind of ruining our quarterback's confidence. We had another media day with our game plan for another elite quarterback here. So many media questions, man. I understand it's week one. I'm trying to play the game here, though. Facing a quarterback like Joe Burrow always presents an immense challenge for any defense looking to stop him. What style of play will give him the most trouble? Sacks goal or pass defense and interception goal. We're going with the interception goal, right? This guy's definitely pretty high powered with his offense, but he's prone to making mistakes. He's so good at identifying pressure before the snap that just makes it tough to bring too much heat. I'm definitely more of a coverage guy, so I absolutely agree with this option here. Patrolling this guy's beat the Seahawks and have four plus pass deflections and interceptions combined. That's kind of a lot. I don't know what really qualifies as a pass deflection, but like does a drop pick count because if drop picks count as pass deflections we'll have at least a dozen of those i guarantee it with how madden 22 plays your entire defense will have plus three man and zone coverage this week love to see that right there our secondary is definitely really solid we don't have any superstars out there we have some really well balanced players though we'll go over the roster here in just a second after we do some upgrades all right so here it is and speaking of our secondary michael OJ. All right, Michael OJ. I'm not going to even try to pronounce his name when I did this draft on stream. Everyone was just correcting me nonstop. So we're calling him OJ. All right, he gets plus three zone coverage, which is actually an awesome boost here. 83 zone coverage after the plus three boost. And Wosu, our only decent pass rusher, we did not draft pass rush. We're going the same route we took last year or last league with our Texans team. And we just, we just didn't take anyone. We took Carl Lawson in free agency, and he went crazy, got season superstar dev. And I figured we would go the same route. Unfortunately, we didn't get lost in this time. We have an Wosu. I don't even know who our other two defensive linemen are. We'll take a look at the whole roster in just a second. Mike Williams, our superstar wide receiver, gets an upgrade here. I'm going deep threat, trying to get that to 85 before the playoffs. Plus three catching, plus two deep route running. What's Mike Williams route running? 84, 82, and 81. I told you guys on all Madden, 85 is the route running threshold. It just helps them beat man coverage, which from playing this guy in the past, he likes to run a lot of man coverage. So I'm a little scared that he might do that here against Mike. We're gonna throw the route tech ability on him for now, which should help until he meets those 85 thresholds. But again, very achievable. None of these guys really play that much. Maybe our center, but I mean, who really cares about that upgrade? We'll auto upgrade the rest of those players. Let's take a look at our roster, take a look at his, and then we're ready to go. All right, so here it is. Here's the roster and our offensive line is not the greatest. Taylor Decker here is our only really serviceable. Well, I guess Dickerson is pretty good too. 78 and 75 overalls respectively. Powers, Skura, and Driscoll, not the greatest. We're hoping that with Zach Wilson's mobility that it doesn't really matter. Maybe we can get Decker up to superstar at some point with those optional superstars that we do have. And again, I've mentioned this in my other leagues. We have the ability to superstar two players of our choosing. We do have to spend a little bit of extra money. It goes towards the prize pool, so it's not completely lost. I don't really want to do that though. Again, I'm not made of money. Plus, I like developing my players. Now, unfortunately, there is no possible way to get your offensive line to superstar. There's no dev games for them, which is something I'm hoping they change in the future because offensive line abilities are awesome, man, especially against all these guys who have these crazy D-line chems. So that's certainly an option we have. I don't know if it's worth it. You guys can let me know in the comments below. Our first round pick here though, George Kittle, X-Factor tight end. Jamar Chase is going to be superstar. After we play 500 snaps, Mike Williams is superstar. We have Jonathan Taylor, who is absolutely nasty. I'm hoping he gets a dev game at some point this season as well. And then Zach Wilson, our young X Factor. On defense here, again, no superstars, but it's very well balanced in my opinion. Now, the defensive line is really the weakness here. We have an Wosu, Nichols, and Onyemata, which is not bad, right? Mid-high 70 overall players. 
Again, I don't really think pass rush is super important this year. I'd rather have these DBs and we went away from speed. We want we wanted guys with decent wheels. We went for height, okay? So six foot one, AJ Terrell. Now obviously AJ Terrell's got some decent wheels. Akuda here as well. Um, our other corner, OJ, is what we're calling him. That's what we're calling him for the entire season. All six foot one. Derek Forrest is six foot. Divine Diablo is six foot three. Our user, Adebo. Here is uh, another six foot one corner with 91 speed. So we got some really nice players here in our secondary. Tons of safeties we can use at linebacker as well. And again, Diablo, Forrest, Jalepsy, Jalepsy, Jalespy. I, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name, man. But that's it for the roster. I feel like it's very well balanced. I love the way we drafted. Perhaps could have made some better picks here and there, but I feel like for the most part, it ended up looking really good. All right, so here is the Seahawks roster. Zach Martin is superstar. Joe Mixon is superstar. Levante David, Kelsey, Casey Hayward. So it's pretty apparent that this guy just didn't care about age. Again, this is a two-year league, so it's not super important. But his team might be hurting in year two after the regressions come through. Lattimore looks really solid, though. 94 speed at corner. Xavier Howard is a superstar corner. Okay, so he's got three superstar corners. I told you guys, he loves to run man coverage. And that's kind of scary to me because, obviously, that seems to be the objective with how he drafted his team. Joe Burrow here at quarterback. His wide receiver core includes Antonio Brown, Galladay, and Ayuk who has superstar, but we might have to run some man coverage of our own. He doesn't really have any speed here at wide receiver. His only superstar receiver is Ayuk, who doesn't have the greatest route running just yet. This is going to be an interesting matchup, man. Can we beat the man coverage will be the question. Let's go ahead and jump into the game and try to get the win. All right. Yep. Here it is. Man coverage. Can Jamar Chase, George Kittle, and Mike Will... Okay. Mike Williams cannot get open. There is no way that is the first play of our new franchise series, man. There is no chance. Mike Williams got put in a cage with route technician. We try to throw the ball to our wide open running back, and it falls right to his defensive tackle for a pick six. All right. Then we play this guy in season. We played this guy in game one of season two of our Texans League, and like the game started the exact same. This I'm having deja vu right now, and it's not good deja vu. All right. And I just got blasted. All right, let's 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 calm down. We All right. Oh, man. I don't know how I'm going to do this. All right. Well, that's why we drafted Mike Williams. He's six foot four. He's going to go up there and he's going to get the football. Was that incredibly lucky? No, that was all skill right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, this is painful. I mean, who is supposed to get open here? <laughs> like honestly who is supposed to get open maybe George Kittle oh man all right all right come on man George Kittle oh my god run George let's go man what a dot he ran cover one I believe we ran a double move, and I wasn't really expecting George Kittle, a tight end, to be the guy who's going to torch man coverage. But right there, that's exactly what he does. What a throw from Zach Wilson under pressure as well. I didn't even notice he didn't have a throwing ability right there. We're able to climb back, man, after a rough start. 7-7. Seven seven. Let's get a stop on defense. This guy is very turnover prone. I come in on the first play. I know this guy, man. I've played him a lot. I know he loves to run the ball, especially on first down. Mm, good check down, good check down. No way he hangs onto that. We absolutely blasting him. Alright, that's fine, it's fine. I'm lagging. Why can't I get my plays off? Pick! Oh my god, Forrest! That was it! He threw it right to me! Defense. Oh, he got the ball off at the last second. Good shed, though, man. Come on. That's what I'm talking about with the defensive line. We have undrafted underdogs there, man. All right. All right. We can't blitz this guy. We got to play coverage. We got to play coverage versus him. That's fine. That's fine. 
All right, like I said, we need to run more. Jonathan Taylor. Oh, Jonathan. Oh, we almost got out of there. I sit in the truck. That was my fault. Mid blitz. Oh, God. He's sending the dogs at me. Get it off. Almost another D-line swap, by the way. Jonathan Taylor. We got to accelerate. We're 94 speed. But it seems so slow right there. Okay, interesting strategy right there. He ran mid blitz again and then just usered his safety. And just, okay, all right. Interesting defensive strategy. I like it. That's a great throw. I don't care if it says under pressure and accurate. That's JT's fault, man. JT, we got to make that. I blocked my running back. What is he doing? Jamar Chase! <laughs> what a dot on fourth and 17, man. Come on. We really got sold by our running back on the play before. Like, we blocked our running back. We had enough guys to stop how many pass rushers he had. And Jonathan Taylor just, he said, I'm not blocking, coach. I'm only here to run inside zone. I'm going corner route to Kittle. Corner route to Kittle. What a laser down the sideline from Zach Wilson. Perfectly placed. Just enough juice, man. Like I said, we don't have the throwing ability, but honestly, it doesn't seem like he's floating the pass that bad. Defense, come on, man. Get the pressure then. Who is that? White? My linebacker? Okay. Bro, I'm lagging today. I don't know what the issue is. I can't get any of my adjustments off. Pick. Let's get it back, OJ. Come on, kid. I'm going to learn how to pronounce the name, I promise. But in the meantime, OJ. Come on, baby. Let's go. You're going to try to use your Kittle? I could be on any route. I could be on a corner route, a post route, a streak, a double move, a hitch. I could be on anything. How are you going to play that guessing game right there? George Kittle. Come on, man. Cook him. Kittle's having a huge game right here for us. Don't let him get that. Don't let him get that. Come on, man. Get the pressure. I told you guys. I told you guys about the defensive line. It doesn't matter what the stats are. Right? It's all about the hearts. Defense again. Come on, man. Let's go. Defense. Defense. Intentional grounding. Back it up. Now go for it. Go for it. All right, here we go. Fourth and 20, man. Come on. We got to get some type of pressure here. He's audibling. What is this, bunch? He's audibling to five wide. No, no, sir. No, who is Sutton? Who is Sutton? I don't know who this is, but make a play. Come on, man. Great defense. Getting our stop back and one more on top of it. Yes, sir. A 14-point lead, but listen. This game is by no means over. He still gets ball here with a lot of time before half. He gets ball out of half as well. If we can get one more stop, then I like her position, but I'm not getting too comfortable just yet. Pick OJ with pick number two. We are suffocating this guy defensively. Come on, let's go. Mm, I try to get back to it. I try to get back to it. Make the tackle. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Oh, we're all over that. Akuda, we got to make that catch, though. We're all over it. Come on, man. Let me get my tip pick back. Yes, sir. Great click on. Clicking on to the nearest defender while the ball was suspended in midair. We get the interception. I haven't caught one of those in a while. I thought they nerfed him, but apparently not. 42 to 14. We turn this into an absolute landslide. Let's go. Oh, he had a good click on right there. We probably could have just out in the pylon. What a great user alert, though. He had a nice little split right there between his running back, Beal, 
and the drag, which is a combo I like. Just putting some stress on the user, but we just did a simple little bait right there. We didn't even really sell it that hard and just went right back to it. The pressure was getting there. We sent the blitz. And ladies and gentlemen, this has turned into an absolute flood. Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase. Come on. We're cooking. We're cooking with that. Probably should have just picked that off, huh? He has four touchdowns, 180 yards, and I have 49 points. That is absolutely ridiculous. I want to run the ball here base with Taylor, and uh, that's why I don't run the ball. I just don't. I will, however, run the ball once again here on a third and goal. We'll just go forward and forth because, you know, why not? Hopefully we can get in here, though. Throw a good block, number 69. Lead the way, Dickerson, and we're into the end zone with Jonathan Taylor. If this guy doesn't quit, I'm going to make it my goal to score as many times as possible with Taylor. Try to force that dev game towards him. I don't know if that's possible, especially this early on in the season, but fingers crossed. Oh, don't let him. Are you serious? There's four people there. I have hard flats and everything. How are we letting Joe Mixon score, man? Oh, we had a cloud right there. Good dot. All right, he's kind of making this a game. Let's just have a good drive here, take some time off the clock, and try to get to the fourth quarter. All right, we know it's going to be some variation of man, maybe a man blitz. I really don't know. He's on his defensive line, though, which is really good for us. George Kittle makes a really nice catch in front of the secondary, or in front of the safety, excuse me. We're going to snap this ball as quickly as possible, and, uh, and hopefully something's open here against the man coverage once again. Kittle. Oh my god, Acrobat just went crazy. What? I thought that was an easy completion. That's where that no gunslinger man really hurts you. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I was looking at I was looking at my computer. I was responding to someone. How did he just score? What just happened? Mike Williams, I thought that was going to be a pick with Acrobat for a second. Put a spin move on him, and we're out of here, Mike. We're out of here, Mike. Oh, we clicked off at the last second. Come on, man. Where's the user stick work? Dude, Acrobat is unreal. Like, that is crazy. What? Again, just another pass that gets completed for a touchdown if we have Slinger. I'm not too worried about it. Like, we pretty much have this game wrapped up, but... Holy smokes, man. Give my guy, Zach Wilson, a break, please. I mean, this is the longest game of Madden I've ever played in my life. I just want it to end, man. I mean, dude, like... What are we doing here, man? Just end the game. All right, GG's, man. We take home a convincing victory in week one. Wilson looked good. 271, four touchdowns, 64%. He had two picks, which honestly, I don't even blame him. Like, two, two of them were literally acrobatic picks. The DB flew out of nowhere, and obviously, he doesn't have his ability just yet. We're going to complain about that and mention that all season. So get used to it once again. We, we went through it already with RG3. We went through it with Mac Jones. It's just important that people understand that that's what we're striving for. Like, that is the ultimate goal when we play the CFMs and use these young quarterbacks. We want to hit that milestone where we get that 80 overall archetype for strong arm, unlock that set feet lead, add some zip to his passes. And we're going with the slot archetype here for AJ Terrell, man. I listen to you guys. You guys tell me slot gives the highest chance of speed. Unfortunately, we don't get that. We have plus one change of direction, though, plus one zone coverage couple man coverage here as well and AJ Terrell looked nasty 92 speed I didn't even realize he got a plus one speed boost already unless he started okay he actually might have started with 92 so I take that back but 90 plus man in zone already that is absolutely crazy and of course I just mentioned it we're going with the strong arm upgrade here for Zach Wilson nothing too crazy here throw under pressure we'll take it Zach Wilson is now eight upgrades away from getting the ability that we need. So hopefully before playoffs, we'll, we're going to have to make it happen before playoffs. We're going to have to run up the score in some of these games. Agility, pass block, and run block for Ben Powers. 
Actually, some nice upgrades here for all offensive linemen. His stats were terrible. But I feel like the blocking was pretty good that game. I don't think offensive line or defensive line really means a lot, especially in Madden 22. I get that question a lot. I think it's secondary. I think it's wide receiver. I think you can live with a bad secondary. Well, not a bad secondary, a bad defensive line and a bad offensive line. I think it just, it just really just doesn't matter. Honestly, there's no other way to put it. We're talking here with our coach. Our entire team has earned a plus 1000 XP, which we absolutely love to see in week one. I think I actually remembered to set my staff point goals as well. I know that's something I'm usually terrible about. I've mentioned in the past, I don't really think the staff trees give anything too crazy. Now, is it worth doing? Yes. Do I keep forgetting to do it? Also, yes. But again, we're going for the strong arm. We have plus 2,500 XP, which I think should be good enough for another upgrade, which means we would need seven more. So any chance we get to add some XP to our quarterback, we are absolutely gonna take. We have another question here about our success against Joe Burrow. I'm not gonna read it too far into these, right? I feel like we've seen all these questions before. The exciting part is the plus 2,500 XP to our defense. I don't know if we held him to under 200 passing yards. It definitely was pretty close. Um, he might've squeaked it in there at the end, but regardless, we got the victory. So we'll get the XP boost. Then next week we take on the LA Rams at home. A great start to the season though at 1-0, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this season premiere. With that being said, I will see you guys in week two, man. Peace.